We're live to you from Lagos, Nigeria's financial capital. I am Busi Nomofaye. Let's start getting today's show started. The Central Bank Chief Godwin Emefe Lagos, a reappointment for another five years by President Buhari. And that was uh, in a letter of uh, nomination sent to the Senate on Thursday by Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Emefe's tenure extension is first major economic cabinet decision of President Buhari since he got his re-election last February. Meantime, Honorable Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udoma Udo Udoma, has inaugurated the Board of the National Bureau of Statistics. The board will serve on a part-time basis. According to the Honorable Minister, uh, he told the board members in Abuja on Thursday, quote, you are required to work with the management of the NBS to determine its mission and long-term strategy, roles and responsibilities and develop strategies to promote sustainable and cost-efficient activities of the Bureau. The Statistics Office is responsible, as you already know, for Nigeria's economic data, which includes inflation, GDP, petrol sector data, among other things. Meantime, the S&P Global Platts survey shows Nigeria's crude oil production tops 14 months high in April at 1.95 million barrels per day. Uh, the quota for Nigeria under the OPEC Plus deal was 1.69 million barrels per day. And looking ahead, MTA Nigeria is listed uh, by introduction on the Nigerian Stock Exchange scheduled for Thursday, May the 16th. The listing may shoot the Nigerian Stock Exchange equity capitalization to the doorsteps of 14 trillion naira. In the meantime, it's been a very nasty week for the world stock markets. And that ends today. No thanks to U.S. President Trump's tweet about fresh $200 billion tariff threats on China, which, of course, uh, took effect today. That's already in the news. On the London Stock Exchange on Thursday, the trading day tracked earnings news from BT Group, the GSK, that's the Glasgow Claim, uh, Pfizer deal, and Standard Chartered facing some angry shareholders. So let's cross over to our London studios where Simon Pewser is standing by with a quick review of the London's trading day on Thursday. Simon, it's good to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much and welcome to London Markets Report. Let's start talking about the um, FTSE 100, which ended 0.87% down yesterday. And usually the FTSE um, depends on things like earnings reports, interest rates, and of course Brexit. But at the moment, it's all about the China-US trade war and the fears surrounding that. So that was down 0.87%. The um, FTSE 250 closed down 1.26%, also surrounding those fears. If we talk about the pound, that was uh, up 0.1% on the dollar and down 0.3% on the euro. Um, the equity markets, uh, the gambling firms, this was the big story yesterday, firms like Paddy Power, um, Labbrook, Coral, um, fears that they uh, may, uh, well, they were down yesterday, fears because the uh, British Medical Journal have suggested that they may have a big tax placed on them to um, try and treat addiction within the UK. The biggest float news yesterday came from Switzerland and the watches of Switzerland, which confirmed that they plan to float on the London Stock Exchange um, in the next few months, and they intend to sell 25% of their stock. The main news here from yesterday, though, was the FTSE 100, um, which was down 0.5%. 0.87 percent, um, 0.87 percent, sorry, uh, like I said, on those fears about the U.S., China um, and the trade wars that are going there. There's obviously lots of news around that today, and we will um, be reporting more on that on the London Markets Report. We'll have that later at 1.30 this afternoon. Yeah, Simon, yes, uh, the U.S. Uh, trade war is now full-blown, as it were, and of course, it's been a very nasty trading week for many markets around the world. I'm sure the London uh, Stock Exchange footage has its own fair share of that downside this week. Now that we have the full-blown war, uh, trade war, as it were, $200 billion, Washington is not blinking, but China says they may take some retaliatory measures uh, against the U.S. This is one big story for you folks at the City of London today as we step into the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, this is something that's going to run and run. And like I said, it's usually Brexit. It's usually interest rates. Um, it's maybe sort of news from the uh, Bank of England that, that really affects the FTSE 100. But everyone's really looking at um, the China-US uh, trade war and maybe any agreement. There was um, certainly some, some news or some thinking amongst analysts and investors that maybe there's going to be an agreement the last few days. It doesn't look like that's going to happen at the moment. Um, you know, the, the rhetoric coming out from both sides is that uh, this is going to escalate. So at the moment, um, 
yeah, the, the, the day ended down as a result of that yesterday. Yes, so how, uh, let's finish off in half. What, what, what is the outlook for the weekend in terms of the weather? <laughs> Simon. How are we looking? Well, today, uh, actually, the FTSE 100 um, opened up. Um, it, was, uh, it gained 31 points. That's up 0.5 uh, percentage points. So that's uh, sort of unusual, given that, that there were those fears about um, the U.S.-China trade war. But for, for some reason, investors were slightly confident that maybe things would, things would move along in a positive positive fashion today. Um, in corporate news, British Airways, um, the owner IAG um, was 4.6% up after it posted quarterly results. So that's the big corporate news coming out of today that uh, British Airways, um, they are on track in terms of their, their figures. Um, and, and that's the main news today. Okay, uh, quite a lot to chew. Enjoy the weekend and the weather there in London. Thank you so much, uh, Simon uh, Puse, uh, a China Civic uh, business uh, correspondent out of London. Thank you very much for our London studios. Have a good weekend. And of course, uh, Simon will be checking in with us uh, later in the day uh, from the London Stock Exchange. Have an intro day on, on the channel's television.